Hello everyone! Welcome back to General Math Made Easy with Teacher Chaan. In this video, we will talk about how to solve exponential equations. Here is the learning objective. At the end of the lesson, you should be able to solve an exponential equation. First, kindly identify which of the following are exponential equations. Among these choices, the exponential equations are 49 equals 7 raised to x plus 1, and 1 over 9 raised to x plus 1 equals 27. Based on this, what is an exponential equation? When we say exponential equation, it consists of two expressions that are set equal to each other where one or both sides contain exponential expressions. So what is the rule in an exponential equation? In solving for the value of the unknown variable, we need to take note that if a raised to b is equal to a raised to c, then b is equal to c. Meaning to say, when the bases are the same, the exponents are equal. So how do we solve an exponential equation? First, we need to determine whether both sides of the equation have the same base in order to be able to equalize the exponents. If the bases are the same, you can just simply ignore them and set the exponents equal to each other. But if the bases are not the same, you must make them the same by changing one or both of the bases as exponential expressions of the same base power. And if the bases cannot be the same, the concept of logarithm needs to be applied which will be discussed on the next chapter. Next step is to solve for the equation by isolating the variable. And third, check your answer by plugging the value found for the variable back into the original equation and simplify. The two sides should be equal. Let us now have some examples. Solve for the value of the variable in the equation 6 raised to x plus 5 equals 6 raised to 3. As we can see in this given equation, the bases are already the same. And in order to solve for this, we will just simply ignore the bases and equate the exponents. So here, we can now have x plus 5 is equal to 3. Solving for the value of x, we need to isolate the x. So we can now have 3 minus 5. So x is equal to negative 2. And to check if this is correct, we'll simply substitute this value to our original equation. So we can now have 6 raised to negative 2 plus 5 equals 6 raised to 3. Simplify, we have 6 raised to 3 is equal to 6 raised to 3. Since we are able to show that two sides are equal, then x equals negative 2 is the answer. Second example, we have 3 raised to x minus 5 minus 2 equals 79. To solve this equation, the first thing that we will do is to combine the constants. So we have 3 raised to x minus 5 equals 79 plus 2. Second is to add these two numbers. We have 81 equals 3 raised to x minus 5. We need to make the bases the same on both sides of the equation. So we have to rewrite 81 as a power of 3. So 3 raised to 4 is equal to 81. So since the bases are the same now, we can just simply ignore them and equate the exponents. So we have x minus 5 equals 4. Solving for x, we have x equals 4 plus 5 equals 9. Let us check if this is right. Substitute this value to our equation. We have 3 raised to 9 minus 5 minus 2 equals 79. Simplify, we have 3 raised to 4 minus 2 equals 79. This one is equal to 81 minus 2 equals 79. So we can now have 79 equals 79. So x equals 9 is a real solution. Third example, we have 16 raised to negative x equals 1 over 64. If we're going to look at these two sides, 1 is a fraction. So in order for us to remove the fraction, we have to recall the negative law exponent, which states that if we have 1 over a raised to n, 
this one is equal to a raised to negative n. In doing this, we will be able to write 1 over 64 as an exponential expression. So we can now have 16 raised to negative x equals 64 raised to negative 1. And if we're going to look at the both sides of the equation, both of them are divisible by 4, meaning to say we need to change these two to make them the same. How? Rewrite 16 as 4 squared times negative x equals 64 rewrite to 4 raised to 3 times negative 1. Let us simplify. We have 4 raised to negative 2x equals 4 raised to negative 3. As you can see, the bases are already the same, so we can now equate the exponents. So we can now say that negative 2x is equal to negative 3. Dividing both sides by negative 2, we have the value of x which is equal to 3 over 2. To check if this is right, we need to substitute this value to our original equation. So we can now have 16 raised to negative 3 halves equals 1 over 64. We write 1 over 64, so we have 64 raised to negative 1. And for 16, 16 raised to negative 3 halves. Make the basis the same, so we have 4 raised to 2 times negative 3 halves equals 4 raised to 3 times negative 1. Simplify the exponents. We can divide 2 over 2, that is equal to 1. So we just simply cancel, and then we have negative 3 equals 4 raised to negative 3. So 3 halves is the solution to this given equation. Next problem, we have 3 squared times 3 raised to x plus 1 is equal to 1 over 27, all raised to the power of x plus 3. If we're going to look at the left side, we need to combine them using the product law in exponent rule. So in the product law, it's stated there that if we have a raised to n times a raised to m, this is equal to a raised to the sum of n and m. And for the right side, if we have 1 over 27, using the negative law exponent, we have 1 over a raised to n. This one is equal to a raised to negative n. Applying these two laws, we can now have 3 raised to 2 plus x plus 1. For the right side, the 1 over 27 is equal to 27 raised to negative 1. We have to copy the x plus 3. Next, we need to make the bases the same. So we have 3 raised to 2 plus x plus 1 is equal to 3 cubed which is equal to 27 times negative 1 times x plus 3. Next is, since the bases are the same, we can now equate the exponents. So we have 2 plus x plus 1 is equal to 3 times negative 1 times x plus 3. Combined like terms, we have x plus 3 equals this 2 is negative 3 times x plus 3. Next, we have x plus 3 is equal to, we have to distribute the negative 3 to x, negative 3x, negative 3 to positive 3, negative 9. Combine like terms, putting all terms with x on the left side, we have x plus 3x. Those constants on the right, we have negative 9 minus 3. Adding this two, we have 4x equals negative 12. Divide both sides by 4. To solve for the value of x, so we now have x equals negative 3. Last example, we have 9 raised to x squared equals 3 raised to x plus 3. To solve this equation, we need to rewrite 9 having the same base with 3. 9 is equal to 3 raised to the power of 2 times x squared equals 3 raised to x plus 3. Next, looking at the two sides, we have same base, so we can now equate the exponents. So we have 2x squared equals x plus 3. 
Since we have x squared, we need to have a quadratic equation, meaning to say we need to put all terms on one side and equate to 0. So we have 2x squared minus x minus 3 equals 0. Since we have a quadratic equation, we need to get the factors of this equation, which are 2x minus 3 and x plus 1 equals 0. We need to solve for the value of x, so we equate both to 0. So let's begin with 2x minus 3 equals 0. 2x equals 3. Divide both sides by 2, so x equals 3 halves. For the second one, we have x plus 1 equals 0, so x equals negative 1. So for this problem, we have two possible answers, x equals 3 halves and x equals negative 1. After giving you several examples, please try to answer the following items. You may pause the video to answer this. Are you done? Let's check your work. The first one, the answer is 7 over 4. The second, the answer is x equals 2. And the third one, the answer is x equals 1 half. Were you able to answer all of this? If yes, great job! What are the important things that you need to take note? An exponential equation consists of two expressions that are set equal to each other where one or both sides contain exponential expressions. And to solve for the value of the unknown variable, just take note if a raised to b is equal to a raised to c, then b is equal to c. Meaning to say, you need to make the basis the same so that you can equate the exponents. Here is the end of our discussion. I hope you have learned a lot about solving exponential equations. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like and comment on this video. Bye everyone. See you on my next video.